What do you say to a couple of crazy guys way out in the desert that you just met that come to you and say, hey, you want to blow up a car for your movie? Boom, big fireball, that'd look great on a film. What do you say? Well, if you're me, a first time director with no money, looking for production value for your movie, you say, let's do that. Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome back to The Making of Backlash. We're continuing to talk about production on my very first feature film. And if you haven't already, make sure you go back and watch the earlier episodes because it'll bring you up to speed on how we got here. Scripting, casting, putting together the crew, figuring out locations, and now we're about to head into production. Our first day on set, if you go back and look at this episode, you'll see that the Northridge earthquake wiped out our location. So now, we're getting our feet under us. It's the second day of production and we're headed down to Hollywood. It's just like a real feature film. To a mini mart where we're gonna shoot a robbery scene as part of the montage. Here's a lesson for all of you first time filmmakers. Try not to shoot montages in your movie. We had like four montages in our movie and they were all made up of these little tiny scenes that required entire company moves. A huge waste of time and effort and everybody's energy to get these little tiny shots that maybe lasted three seconds in the movie. Not worth it. Give me some tequila, man. Then you run into issues like we did in Hollywood at the Seven Star Mini Mart. I found this place when Christian and Sonny and I were down in Hollywood doing our rehearsals and I walked in and I asked the owner if we could film there. And he's like, yeah, okay, you can do that. Well, I don't think he really understood what that meant because when we showed up, he just was shocked. He's like, uh, this isn't what I had in mind. But his wife was really kind and she's like, listen, they're already here, just let them film. There was a rack of sunglasses or something, I forget. And we asked him if we could move the rack like three feet just so we could get our dolly to be able to move around the corner without hitting anything. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want you moving anything in the store. And then what happened? We moved the dolly, it leaves a huge gouge in his countertop. This countertop that he built with his own hands. This dude was so mad. His wife was nice enough to help us out and kind of take the heat. But we're getting one shot and we're out of here. Oh, I felt so bad. I just, I'm like, dude, let me make this up to you somehow. Let me pay. He's like, nope, just leave. I don't ever want to see you again. So we moved on. And we had another mini mart to shoot. Christian and Sonny were going to come in and rob the place and Harry was going to back him down with a shotgun. Go, get out of here. Keep yelling at him, keep yelling at him. Come on, come on. Cut! <laughs> Harry was a comedian. He couldn't intimidate anybody. What are you doing? I, so. I cast him literally just off his headshot. Don't ever cast somebody just off their headshot. Make sure that you bring them in and you audition them and you make sure that they can do the scene as you want it to be done on film. You rotten hoodlums! You think you are Bonnie and Clyde? And it spilled over. There was another time too. I, I remember we had this motorcycle cop scene where Tommy actually gets confronted by a motorcycle cop later in the film. Well, we had this guy who was really, really intimidating. We cast him and he was great and he was gonna come and we were gonna rent a motorcycle for him, a police motorcycle. We could not find a police motorcycle that was in our budget until finally Jake found a guy with a motorcycle that was in our budget and he said, I'll even come and do the scene with the motorcycle. So we're like, okay, we'll do that. So we actually let the first actor go, which was a huge mistake. Why? Because the guy shows up with this police motorcycle and he's like 80 years old. He was a funeral escort. We thought he was a cop. We thought he was gonna come with the gun and the badge and the attitude and the whole bit. No, he shows up and he couldn't even hear us. I want you to just glance over your shoulder, okay? I don't want, Jerry, look at me please. I don't want you to do this, okay? And I want you to glance back at him, Jerry. Jerry? Jerry? So trying to get him to do anything was so frustrating. We had to do it again and again and again. Okay, here we go. Rolling sound. Rolling. Ready in action. Action. Sir, stay on your bike. Back up right now. Okay, Jerry, I need you to pull your gun. Sorry. I need you to pull your gun right here, okay? And you can see where I'm just starting to lose it because the sun's going down and we're not getting the scene that I want and his acting was terrible. Where are you going? You told me you were going to see your sister. 
and I take all the responsibility for that. I don't blame him for that. He wasn't an actor. We asked him to do a job, he showed up, we paid him some money, he's like, who's not gonna do that, right? I'm just glad the police didn't stop by. We don't have any permits. We're there with a couple of working guns. In fact, we had so many guns on this production, it wasn't even funny. And you know how we got them? There was a place down in Glendale that rented guns to the movie business. And I called him up and I said, listen, my name's Dave, we're making a movie. Is it possible that I can get some guns that shoot blanks? They said, sure, just write us a letter on your letterhead Tell us what you need, we'll give you a price, you can come on down and check them out. And when we came in there, it was like walking into World War III. I mean, they had Arnold's minigun from Terminator 2. They had the cannons from Gunga Din. And we walked out of there with a pistol, with rifles, with a NATO authorized sniper rifle, 30 odd sixes. I mean, we had so much and we put it all in the back of my truck and it was all just because we wrote him a letter on letterhead. Now, also keep in mind that we were able to rent a police car with a fully working light bar, sirens, the whole nine yards. We rented police uniforms, badges. I mean, just by having your name on letterhead and making a movie at that time, we were fully decked out as cops for the movie with working weapons. So this brings us to one of the craziest days of production that I've ever had in my life. In the story, Tommy and Jennifer, they complete their montage and they're going to Vegas to get married, but their car breaks down. So they gotta hitch a ride to this place to get their car fixed. And there they encounter the character of Tobe, played by Harrison Ray. And Harrison looked every bit the part. Go back here and check this out if you wanna hear about finding the location for the Tire City mechanic. This place is an ocean of tires. It is just incredible. And you don't really see it that well from the highway, but once you're back in here, I mean, there must be literally thousands of tires here. So we roll up on this place first thing in the morning. It's like five o'clock in the morning. It's totally foggy. And we're there for a full day of production. We've got the motor home. We've got like several other vehicles. We've got our whole cast and crew. And they're all looking at me walking into this place like, what? are you doing to us? What is this place? And on the horizon, we hear this <laughs> and over our heads, <laughs> everybody freezes. What was that? <laughs> Out of the fog comes my location guy and he's holding this PVC pipe and he goes, Hey, you like my spud gun? <laughs> I can hit the freeway from here. <laughs> and he's shooting potatoes over our head, 200 yards toward the freeway. And so we got to work and we laid our dolly track out and we started blocking the scene and Harrison got into his outfit and Christian and Sonny got into their wardrobe. I'm dressed in um, uh, black boots, like jeans, ripped, black belt, blue shirt, folded sleeves, and a gun. Next question. Where's the gun? Bang! Fine! <laughs> James Bond! But I'm telling you, it was not always safe while we were there. Where are the keys? What? Where are they? I remember during one of the days that we were there, these five guys roll up in this beater little car up to the house where they knock on the door and they start having an argument with our location dude. And they went in the house and we heard all kinds of banging and yelling and everything else. And then all of a sudden they come booking out of the house and our guy's sitting, coming, ripping after them with this shotgun in his hands, yelling, get out of here, you blah, 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 flim, flam, and blim, 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 blim. And they were like, get in the car, peel out. They were running for their lives. And our guy was like, how dare you come in here and make up this thing and say all this stuff when these guys are in the middle of their film and I'm there trying to make a movie. You're here messing everything up, how dare you? And he was totally protecting us. At the end of the day, after we were done filming our scene, he comes up to me and he said, listen, you still want to blow up that car? We can put the ether in the back and roll up all the windows and light it on fire. And the pressure will be such that the car will blow up. And it'll be this big old fireball. And as long as you're rolling, it'll look great on film. So we're like, well, why not? I mean, how bad could it be? When you're asking how bad can it be, that's generally when you want to just call it a day they drag the car out into the middle of our location with this big water truck. And then they got their ether and they put it in the back of the car. And I said, listen, I'm not gonna be responsible if any of your crew gets hurt. 
You're volunteering to blow up this car on your own time. And we're at this point just like a documentary crew. Yeah, yeah, we're just we're just documenting what's happening over there. Okay, so we're gonna be over here. You do your thing, and if it goes and you're running and we get it on film and it goes up, great. The sun's going down. It's twilight. Perfect time to see a fireball, right? But we didn't know how big this was gonna be. We didn't know if the police were gonna come. We didn't know if some helicopter overhead was gonna see it and report us. We didn't know if there was gonna be a big fire. We didn't know if it was gonna catch the tires on fire and create this inferno. We didn't know anything. They fill the gas tank, they throw the ether in there, and they light it on fire and run. And the little fire goes and it just burns. No explosion. No nothing. They would go back up to the car and try and beat on it and they'd throw stuff in there and they'd try to get more fuel to the fire to make this thing go higher and higher. And I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody is going to die. This is like our movie. <laughs> dies. And it never goes right either. The smoke was going up into the air and I just knew somewhere out there, somebody is gonna call the fire department. They were gonna come out, figure out what was going on. We were gonna be busted. And I told the guy, I said, guys, listen, thank you so much for trying to get this car to blow up for us. We really appreciate all your hospitality. You've been wonderful to us, but we gotta go. And we loaded up our stuff and we drove out. And as we drove out and we looked back, that whole car was fully on fire. To this day, I don't know if that car blew up or not because we were gone. So forget all that. We're not gonna look behind anymore. We're gonna look forward. And the next 40 minutes of the film, the last half of the movie took place in Lake Tahoe. And so we moved the entire company up to a little cabin on the lake owned by friends of ours we crammed our entire cast and crew into this cabin and we went all over Lake Tahoe doing stunts, shooting guns, having crazy fight scenes. And then one of our main actors didn't show up. And so at the last second, we had to rewrite the entire ending of the film. And I'll show you that next time. I'm off of this set right now. I've got a life to lead. I've got a life to lead. Guys, do me a favor, if you like this video, you know the drill. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel, come back for more because next week we're gonna wrap up production and we're gonna talk about what it takes to get your film sold. I'll see you next week.